What's up, y'all? So uh, today we are doing one of my absolute favorite things to do in the garden, which is plant a tomato. Kind of getting back to the basics here, I'm going to plant this little guy into one of these 10 gallon black non-woven fabric grow bags. This year we put most of our tomatoes directly into the ground in a different location, but we're kind of making this area into a toddler friendly garden. So this little plant that was originally destined to head for the compost is getting a new lease on life and is gonna be plopped right into here. This is a white cherry uh, tomato, which it, it, it's a good, it's a good variety, not necessarily one of my favorites, but I think the color makes it sort of fun and will add a little pop of pop of variety into what is meant to be a fun area of the garden. What I'd really like to get across in this video is that planting tomatoes in containers doesn't need to be a complicated or expensive process. I picked these containers up for about a buck fifty a pop. Inflation is a little crazy right now. They're probably a little bit more expensive than that, but, but maybe two or three bucks a pop at most. The soil is a DIY mix that I've uh, shown in another video, and it's about $3 to $3.50 for a cubic foot. And that includes all the necessary ingredients, no extra fertilizer needed, at least at the time of planting. When we're talking about tomatoes, one of the first things that you're gonna hear is that they require really good drainage, right? They don't like to have soggy feet, which is totally true, but I think you can actually get away with a denser, lower quality potting mix when you're using one of these fabric grow bags, or at least that's that's been the case in my experience, because the aeration is so good all the way around, even on the bottom in this case, because we have sort of these rather large wood chips. So I'm not overly worried about aeration or moisture retention. I think there's there's gonna be really good drainage. Altogether, $1.50 for the container, few dollars for the soil, and we planted these from seed. So, you know, we're maybe a dollar into this, including electricity cost. Not too bad. Now, before I actually get planting, let's talk a little bit about the container. This is a 10 gallon version of what has now become a, a really ubiquitous type of pot, right? I have planted in seven gallon, which works really, really well, even for large indeter indeterminate plants. I've also tried five gallons, which is I think kind of borderline. And if you're going even smaller than that, perhaps down to three gallon, I think it can work, but you're probably gonna wanna find a patio variety, something like the ever popular Tiny Tims. For this larger cherry tomato, I'm gonna to go with the 10 gallon because I'm also going to be planting either a marigold or a basil plant or, or potentially even like a, a, a hot pepper plant in here. I always like to, to companion plant, um, particularly when I'm not necessarily maximizing for production, but for um, interest. This mix contains a fair amount of manure already and I'm gonna be adding some compost. So in my experience, there's no need to add additional fertilizer for tomatoes at the time of planting. Once I allow them to start flowering and fruiting, that's when I'll start adding the fertilizer. Just like you would with a plant that was going into the ground, we are going to plant this tomato quite deeply, which means that before we get started, I'm actually just going to go ahead and pinch off all of these bottom stems. I'm using my fingers here. It's really better practice to use a sharp set of shears or pruners, but we're not gonna get too fancy today. There we go. And I'm just leaving sort of the, the top crown as well as one additional, um, one additional stem. What that's gonna do is just allow this plant to grow a nice set of roots up through here using its adventitious root system. In terms of prep, that's it. I've got a manure heavy mix uh, potting soil here. I've got a very standard 10 gallon fabric grow bag. And I have a rather bedraggled, but still, still healthy enough, uh, white cherry tomato. And there's nothing else we need to do. Let's get it into the ground. Just adding a little bit of a additional compost directly to the actual planting hole here. All right. So as always, we don't wanna pick up the plant directly with its stem. This is actually not too rebound. I thought it was gonna be worse. I'm gonna loosen up the, the root ball a little bit here, but definitely not too bad. All right. Get it in there nice and deep. All right. So just like I would if I was planting in the ground, I'm gonna create a little bit of a mound here. And as I mentioned, I am going to companion plant this probably with a marigold. And so I'm gonna offset it a little bit, right? I'm putting the, the tomato plant just slightly further back than the actual center of the container. If you're gonna plant it alone, you can go ahead and plant it directly into the center. But I do definitely recommend if you have the, a big enough container, plant it with something else. It's a little bit more fun. There are benefits. The marigold will help keep some insects away. All right. And we're just gonna top dress yet again. A little more compost here. 
trying to just scratch that in here onto the mound. Great. And that's really going to be enough nutrition for this plant to get a good start on life here. I'm not worried about it at all. And there you go. All right, with my plant in the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and mulch thoroughly. As I mentioned, these fabric grow rags are terrific for drainage and aeration. But the flip side of that is that they can dry out on, uh, they can dry out pretty quickly. So we're gonna at least prevent some of that evaporation from happening through the top. Now I'll put in one to two inches of wood chip mulch here to start. And then once the plant gets a little bit taller, you'll notice that I've left a good bit of room to add some more mulch. And I really do mulch <laughs> pretty aggressively. Three inches is kind of what I shoot for for our annuals. And I have found that with that much wood chip mulch, there's just not that much risk of me letting this plant fully, fully dry out. It really does a wonderful job of helping to retain moisture, which is great in my very hot, dry climate. Now, uh, a lot of gardeners don't like to bring the mulch right up to the stem like this, and there's a good reason for that. It can uh, just make sure I'm not stealing all the mulch from some of these other plants. Uh, but yeah, as I was mentioning, there's, there's a good reason to kind of allow a bit of a gap between the stem of the plant and the mulch, and that is to basically prevent the stem from rotting when the mulch doesn't allow it to properly air out and dry out. I tend not to worry about that too much. Again, as I mentioned, I just live in a really... Hi, hello. Oh, the dog would like to be in the shot here. Uh, yeah, so I don't worry about that too much. We don't get a ton of rain in the summer, a couple days a month in sort of uh, late spring, early summer, and then mm, maybe zero days through the height of summer. Obviously that's going to differ by your location. So kind of just leave however much room you feel is appropriate. Now I'm gonna water this sucker in pretty heavily just to make sure that the original root ball here is making good contact with the new soil. But after I do that going forward, I'm just gonna use a real simple drip emitter uh, hooked up to an automatic timer. And we'll probably give them about 15 minutes or so, real slow, uh, small amount of water coming out, but for about 15 minutes, so a, a pretty deep watering for a 10 gallon container, three times a week, and we'll see how that goes. That's my plan for this area. For now, obviously this isn't hooked up to anything, but I do like to kind of put them pretty close into the plant. And we'll do that here soon before there's, there's too much uh, root expansion, just so that the stake here isn't damaging the root of the plant. But yeah, for now, let's go ahead and water in with a hose. <sighs> okay. Starting to see a fair bit of the water drain through here. So I'm gonna call it a day and assume that the soil is pretty well saturated. As I mentioned, we're not gonna see evaporation, evaporation rather, very quickly just due to the amount of wood chip mulch we have on here. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do now that we're planted in is just make sure that there are no flowers forming. The flowers at this point in the plant's life are premature for an optimal harvest. So I'm gonna go ahead and just nip those right off. And what that's gonna allow the plant to do is really focus its energy on root growth and vegetative growth. And that's what I want. Generally speaking, what I'm looking for is a plant that is about 
18 inches or higher and has been transplanted into either a container like this or into the ground for about a month before I'm gonna start letting the flowering take its course. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this bottom portion on. I know a lot of gardeners would trim it off and I, I will eventually, but as I mentioned, we have a very dry uh, climate here and the drip emitter that I'm going to be using is going to be a very low flow. So I'm not too worried about there being a lot of splash of diseases coming up from the soil onto the leaves. And then in addition to that, uh, the wood mulch really helps reduce the splash effect anyways. Once this plant puts on an additional six inches or so, I'll, I'll come through and prune off these bottom portions. You can see they're already starting to wither a little bit and they'll be pretty close to dead at that point. I really tried to emphasize here how simple it is to plant a cherry tomato into a container, but I will say that there's one element that maybe is a little bit complicated and that is ongoing pruning. So with tomatoes, very often you're gonna hear that you should remove the, the suckers. Um, and those are the little portions of growth kind of in the elbow of the plant. And generally, I agree with that. I like to, to train my, my tomato plants to grow up a single liter. It just makes them really easy to care for, gives a lot of airflow. But with cherry tomatoes, you are sacrificing um, a fairly significant amount of harvest for that. There's a good paper put out by Cornell that I will link to in the description that um, actually did an analysis of sort of the, the effort versus um, harvest that you, <laughs> that you get for different types of um, trellising with cherry tomatoes. And, and I think uh, their final recommendation really makes sense to me, which is that we're going to end up with two primary leaders rather than one, or rather than allowing this plant to just completely bush out. What we're basically going to do is allow one sucker to grow. And that sucker is going to be the one immediately beneath the first flower. So we're just going to allow one sucker, the one directly beneath the initial flowering group, to effectively create a Y branch with this initial stem. And that creates a pretty good balance between uh, ease of maintenance <laughs> and a good harvest. What it also means though, is that you're probably going to need two stakes if you're using stakes and, and generally for uh, container grown tomatoes, I like to use a stake rather than like a, a full trellis system. And certainly not a tomato cage. Tomato cages are the worst. I generally recommend staying away from them. But basically, once I do have those def that defined Y with the original stem and then the, the sucker that I allow to grow out, I'm just gonna put uh, a six foot or so stake uh, next to each one. And then I am going to train the plant to grow up both of those as, as my two main leaders. Finally, in terms of fertilization, as I mentioned, I'm not going to use any store-bought fertilizer until I do allow the flowering and fruiting to happen. I'm gonna add some worm castings and that's it. But when I do allow the flowering to start, I'm going to either use a balanced 10-10-10 fertilizer, or I'm gonna use uh, more of a tomato-specific fertilizer with a ratio that it's uh, weighted a little bit more towards the phosphorus and potassium and a little bit away from the nitrogen. Either one is gonna work fine. If you want to prioritize for easy, these organic fertilizer spikes work really well and they are dead simple to use. A granulated fertilizer will also work just fine. Also, you can really get away with just using organic compost. Compost is a very mild fertilizer, so you may have a slightly reduced harvest, but it's up to you whether or not you want to prioritize for uh, fertilizers that are simple and easy to make at home or go buy some at the store. I'm not using any super specific amendments to make sure that there's uh, sufficient trace minerals in the mix and that's because I'll be using some homemade organic compost as well as a lot of worm castings and those do a pretty good job of making sure that all of those micronutrients are available for the plant. Keep it simple. One final note, you'll notice that it's a little bit overcast today and that was done on purpose. It just provides a slightly uh, gentler transition for the plant as it becomes used to its new home. All right, that's really all there is to it. I hope this helped dispel any notions around planting tomatoes in containers being an overly expensive or complicated or time-consuming endeavor. If you're just looking to produce a little extra food at home for yourself and your family, growing tomatoes in containers really can be a very simple, cheap, and achievable addition to the garden. So I hope you've got a delightful afternoon of gardening ahead of you, and I'll see you next time.